Scene chow. All the plot functions we have seen so far have been two-dimensional. In this video, we will look at four different 3D plot types. Keep in mind this critical fact. MATLAB is plotting discreetly, or in other words, it places known points and then uses lines to connect the dots. The first function today is plot3, used to create 3D line plots. This will produce an image like what you see on the right. These types of plots are useful for parametric equations, in which we have one independent variable or input, and two dependent variables or outputs. In this example, t is created as an independent vector. Then, corresponding values for x are computed, and then different values for y are computed. We then pass in these three vectors as inputs to the plot3 function. With this command grid on, the dashed grid lines appear, making it easier to read the plot. One possible interpretation of this particular plot is the vibrations of a spring. T represents time since you flicked the spring. X and Y represent the horizontal and vertical positions of the end of the spring as it vibrates. As time goes on, or as we move vertically up this plot, these vibrations get smaller and smaller. The next three plot types are all under the category of 3D surface plots, and all show the same thing, but in slightly different ways. A mesh plot, shown on the left, creates a wireframe plot. A surface plot, shown in the center, looks just like a mesh plot, but with the grid squares colored in. And a contour plot, shown on the right, is a mesh plot viewed from above, with each line indicating a change in elevation. For all of these, there are two independent variables from which a single dependent variable is computed. MATLAB plots discreetly. With 2D plots, that means we are dealing with ordered pairs. With 3D plots, this now means ordered triplets. Here, we see a simple example of z equals x plus y. The overall trend is clear. As x increases, z increases. And as y increases, z increases. But how is this particular shape drawn in MATLAB? First, independent variable x is defined as going from 1 to 3 in steps of 1. Then, independent variable y is defined as going from 2 to 8 in steps of 2. Then, and this is the key part, z is computed as x plus y at every combination of x and y. Those computed order triplets are the intersection points of these grid lines. For example, the lower right corner shows x is 3, y is 2, and z is 5. Similarly, this point shows x is 2, y is 8, and z is 10. All of the intersection points are computed this way, and the lines are simply connecting the dots. How can we do this? How do we obtain every combination of x and y? We use the function meshgrid. First, x and y are declared as incremented vectors. So, in this example, x is a vector holding 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. y is a vector holding 2, 5, 8, and 11. Then we call the mesh grid function, passing in these two vectors and requesting two output arguments. The two resulting matrices are shown here. The first one looks just like the original x vector, except now it is repeated four times across rows. The second one looks just like the original y vector, except now it is repeated five times across columns. What is special about this? Now, an element-by-element -element operation between the two matrices handles every combination of x and y. When x is 0 and y is 2, the top left index handles that. When x is 0 and y is 5, the next index down handles that. And so on for every combination of x and y. Here we see z computed as x squared times y. Looking at the top left corner, 0 squared times 2 produces 0. Looking at the top right index, 4 squared times 2 produces 32. And so on for all 20 of these indices. Now we have a whole set of xyz ordered triplets. This lets us use a command like surf to make the plot shown here. How many intersection points do you see on the plot? 20. 
one for each ordered triplet in the matrices. The general rule of thumb is that it is easy to make plots with a built-in function. The hard part is obtaining the right data to use in the function.